Welcome to Casebag Watches, my name is Tim and in this video I like to speak about radium and luminescence, the danger of radium and I want to show you a very interesting watch a viewer has sent in, his name is Till, thank you very much and he wants to know if this is a real Wehrmacht watch. I've done in the past this video about watches in the service of the German Wehrmacht and he was inspired by this to send me this, this watch here and he mentioned a radium because he has seen my one of my last videos about the B or by Laco where you could see this those big hands with massive radium in it and some viewers were slightly concerned and said it's very dangerous to open that watch Tim you shouldn't have done this There are two main categories of loom. Category number one, loom which can store light and emit it again after that, okay? And category number two, just shines from itself. Those are the two main categories. And if we speak about radium, then we speak about a material which emits light by itself without storing anything. And the biggest misconception is now that people think the light you see from radium is the radiation. This is not accurate. What there shines is another substance attracted by the radiation. For instance, zinc in many cases. So you see glowing zinc but not the radiation. And this, by the way, is the explanation why you can have a dark radium dial and you think then, oh, this is not longer dangerous because I can't see any, any sort of light. It's dead. And it's not. The zinc is exhausted, but the radiation is still present. And this, of course, is then very dangerous because radium has a half-life of 1,600 years. What does it mean? It means that after 1,600 years, there is still half of the radiation present. It's still radioactive, okay? This is then the big danger. By the way, I'm wearing something completely harmless nowadays. I'm wearing my Oris pointer date from the 90s. And the modern case, of course, is if you take your modern watch out of the drawer and you go to your, your cellar, your dark cellar, then you will not see any light on the dial. And now back to radium. The big danger was well illustrated by a story called the Radium Girls. This, these were uh, women in the United States during the 20s in direct contact with radium. Because back then in the United States there were the first, let's say, the first industrialized fabrication of watches with large workshops. 4,000 people were in direct contact with or were painting radium dials, especially women, and they were instructed to sharpen their, their brush with the tip of their tongue. And they did this. And of course, you can imagine where a term like radium jaw from the medicine comes from. Because they involved um, terrible forms of cancer and other diseases. Many of them died, actually. And they used the radium to paint the dials, of course, but also for their fingernails. And some women even thought it would be a funny form of makeup to frighten your boyfriend or your husband at night with radium as, as, as makeup. So you can imagine the amount of radiation they were exposed to. And the danger first in the 20s were completely unknown to the industry. They sold radium to anybody who wanted to use it. Here you see an old ad of Undark. This was just a color you could buy like every other color and it, yeah, it contained radium. Later on, when the amount of cancer cases were obvious and obvious in connection to radium, the industry tried to hide that because they wanted to keep their access to cheap labor, of course, without any, any advanced equipment to protect those women. An interesting side fact by many lawyers and judges, radium today is seen as the first big step towards labor rights in the United States because the idea that our body should be unharmed by our work is new. It's relatively new. In the 20s this was yeah, unheard of. And the, a few brave women were the first, the first um, people who filed lawsuits against their companies. And there's a documentary out there about those Radium Girls. Title is just Radium Girls. I leave a link in the, in the description. I haven't seen the documentary but if you have and you think it's worth a look then please let us know in the comments. Okay and now last topic before we go in the light box and check Tilt's watch. Um, how can you spot the different type of looms? This, I think, is an important question, especially, especially if you handle 
vintage watches and it's not so easy as it seems. Some people think well it's brown so it has to be radium, it's beige and so it has to be tritium and it's green so it has to be luminova. Um, unfortunately it's not so easy. First Super Luminova comes in I think four or five colors and among them the color old radium for instance. Um, secondly Yes, radium turns into brown, but if you have a very thin layer of radium, then the brown will not so intense. And if you have a very thick layer of tritium, then it might be darker than radium. And of course, the age plays a role in that. And so I think for normal people like us, it, there's no certain way to determine which kind of loom is on your watch. A good start is um, the question when was it manufactured because radium they used until the 60s and tritium in the in the 90s but then they changed to superluminova and if you want to go further then I think you need a Geiger counter. I don't have a Geiger counter but I think if we use the Geiger counter with a, with a, with a B word from one of the last videos it would have indicated massive radiation. I think so yes. Okay, but now it's time for the light box. Let's see if Till's Wehrmachtsuhr really is a uh, Wehrmachtsuhr. Okay, here it is. Here is our so-called Wehrmachtsuhr or Dienstuhr made in this case by Glycine. I keep the background a little bit short. If you want more in-depth information, then please check out the video Watches and Service of the German Wehrmacht. But to tell you brief, the Dienstuhr was a concept. There were specifications and if a manufacturer was willing to make business with the Wehrmacht then he could yeah, follow those specifications and produce a watch for the German army, for all forces. And what we see here is made by Glycine and at first glance you see the specifications where black dial, seconds on position 6, massive loom, so very legible. The case diameter was specified at 32, a book stated. I don't know if this is correct by the way because I've seen many watches a little bit bigger and this for example is 34 millimeters case diameter. You see that the case is yeah, brass, I think, chrome plated brass, which is correct, which is historically correct. There are very few full steel, stainless steel Wehrmacht watches out there. You see that the crown is steel, but the rest is clearly plated, chromium plated. And at first glance, I can tell you the dial is in my eyes a little bit too good to be true. I mean, look at this. The numerals are perfectly legible. There are no damage. There is a little bit of patina on the dial. I think you can see this. Um, but overall, I've rarely seen those watches in this condition, especially if you compare the condition of the chrome plating and the condition of the dial. I mean, the plexi is, I think, is new, but this is not a problem. Plexi is, uh, yeah, not not really important. And here's the case back, stainless steel. So this is historically correct. And here you find the numbers because not every Wehrmacht's watch was stamped like this, was engraved like this with those numbers here, but a fair chunk of them. And you see here a D, which stands for Dienstuhr, which is service watch in German. And you see the little H there, this stands for Heer. And here is the German uh, word for yeah, infantry. The steel shows a little bit of patina because stainless steel can evolve a little bit of rust but over a very long time and you see here clearly that there is some, some yeah, corrosion on it and so this seems pretty legit. I've tried to open the watch, it was impossible um, because you can see here the, the plating kind of entered the thread and I think it will be very hard to, to open this watch. Inside should be an AS113 movement. This was the EDA of those times, so a manufacturer who produced movements for other manufacturers. Okay, let's operate the watch and then I'll show you something interesting on the dial. Feels substantial, feels, um, to be frank, feels, yeah, feels in good order. Good shape. Then you have position one, you set the time, there's resistance, so this indicates that this, of course, is not new and then you're good to go. Okay, and now let's speak about the die, what, what, I've, what I've seen here. Again, the condition is too good to be true in my eyes and you can see, if you look closely, you can see three different colors on the dial. First, the color of the hands. This color is, is a little bit green. 
and radium cannot be look like that. So I think this is modern loom and I put the, the watch in front of a strong light source and actually it shines. It's still active loom and there's no way that original radium can shine. Then you can see there's another difference between the green and the numerals. The numerals are perfect. The numerals are absolutely perfect. They cannot be in original condition in my eyes. And they are very bright. They're extremely bright. They are not active. They don't emit any form of light. And the third color you find on the, on the dots, on the indices. And so I personally think, I personally think that this watch wasn't refurbished. This die wasn't refurbished because you can't find overall a very evenly distributed patina. But I think what they've done, they've replaced the radium on the on the hands with modern modern luminescence. They kind of painted then the numerals with yeah, with varnish over the radium, and the original radium I think you can see only on the dots. Although even on the dots, it's a little bit too bright for radium. So what could have happened that they replaced or they overpainted the radium with tritium because I think this is tritium on the dots. And I found another sign on the dial here in region of the of the four numeral. It's very it's very small, so you can see it only with a magnifier. But it looks like a mark from a tool which was used to yeah remove old radium, remove old varnish to prepare the numerals for this new white substance here. And so you have here a combination of I think tritium, neutral varnish, and superluminova, or another form of modern luminescence. So a uh, hardly treated dial, but um, but to be frank, I think it's not the end of the world. Um, renewing luminescence and replace luminescence is a very yeah normal, normal, normal job for a watchmaker. And so I think till um, this is kind of a small jackpot here. I wish to see the movement. This would be the next question. If it, this was my watch, I would visit a watchmaker with proper tools and then you can have a look at the movement if it really is the AS1130 or something else. But overall it's a really good example for a Wehrmacht watch in wearable condition. I mean this is absolutely yeah crazy. But the watch world is big at the end and if you are specialized in those watches and you see something I haven't, haven't seen here then please let us know in the comments. Um, one word to the strap. This is of course not the original strap. This is a new strap. 18 is the lock width and here you see um, there, are, there are no spring bars. This is this old system where you have to fold the strap around the yeah around this bar and here are attached clasps to make it secure and then you can wear it actually. I will put it on the wrist so let's see how it looks. And there it is. There you see a yeah, 1940s Dienstuhr inherited, probably in use uh, during World War II on the German side. And yeah, I think kind of wearable, kind of wearable. You see the size is of course very small. I have a 17 centimeter wrist, but yeah, it looks interesting look for sure, interesting look. Okay, welcome back. Till, thank you again for sending the watch in. When you're watching this, it will be back in the mail. And dear viewer, if you want to see more images of watches and other things I find interesting, then please join me on Instagram. It's caseback underscore Tim. And now let me thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time.